You know, as we gather today, we also need to remember uh, a couple of families that aren't here today, uh, Miss Millie and, and Jake. Uh, Sis can probably give you a better update, so if you want to talk to her after the church service, feel free to get a better update. But um, she is with him today, and uh, our prayers are still going out to them. Um, as far as I know, he is doing fine. Um, recovery, it's going to be a long, slow process. But you know what? It's just like God. He takes his time, and in his time, everything's going to be okay. All right, so let's remember them. Let's remember Matt and Aaron and uh, their family. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they're at. They may be traveling. If so, let's uh, keep them in our prayers. And uh, anyone else that's not here, uh, for whatever reason, let's keep them in their Angie, I know she's traveling today, um, but let's keep them. Okay, let's dive into the world, word today. Trust God in this day. When I look through the scriptures, every famine that's ever happened, every economic downturn, every plague, every disease, God's people has sustained, has come through those through every season that the world went through, because they put their trust in Him, they have came out victorious. Because when your trust is in the Lord, you're secure. When you know it's easy to say, I will trust God when everything is going good, and everything is happy and all is going according to plan, I'm just trusting the Lord, and look how good everything is. But it's a whole different deal to trust in God when things aren't going so good. Which leads to my first point, the meaning of trust in God. You see, to trust in God means you have to allow Him to do what He wants to do. Even if He fails, and you can say, He's God. He cannot fail. And that's the point. Because He is God, He will never fail. So trust in Him. So you must trust Him enough to let Him succeed. But let Him succeed in His terms, not ours. In His way and in His time. Not on my time and certainly not on my terms. In his timing, yes. In my timing, no. In his way, yes. In my way, no. To trust God is to say, I'm going to let God do what he wants to do. Lord, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight with you. And I'm not going to resist you anymore. But I am going to let you know that I trust in you. And what you will do will be for the best. I'm going to fear. I'm not going to fear the outcome. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want. So in other words, God says he will take care of you in all your needs if you will just trust in him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you, my Lord, is with me. Let's turn to 1 Peter, 4th chapter, and we're going to start reading in verse 12. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the first fiery trial when it comes upon you and tests you, as though something strange were happening to you. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For I momentary light affection, afflictions is producing for us an absolutely incomparable internal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is just temporary. But what is unseen will be eternal. So we focus not on what is seen, 
all the problems around us, all the trials and tribulation that seems to be focusing on the world today, but on what is not seen, for what is seen is only temporary. It's going to last but for a little while. But the unseen is forever. It's going to be eternal. Point number two, Jesus will lead you into a storm. Now, you don't hear very many preachers direct a statement like that, but God will leave you or lead you into a storm. Sometimes when you're following Jesus, he will lead you right into a storm. Remember in the New Testament where, the, <clears throat> where twice, I believe, the disciples found themselves in a storm. They thought they were going to die in both instances. They were in the storm. They were in their time of trouble. Not because they were doing anything wrong. They were in trouble because they were doing things right. They were following Jesus. They were obeying what Jesus th told them to do. They were following his directions, and his directions led them right into the storm. But if they did not ever go through those storms, they would have never discovered, discovered the truths that Jesus has got. There were things that they saw about him that they'd never seen before. They had never seen before what was to come. And they would never, ever have learned if it was not for them going through the storms with him. The, descent, the tendency that I have is whenever I see a storm in the horizon, I find every way possible to go around it, to find another direction. But sometimes Jesus will take you by the hand and say, come on, we're going to go through the storm and we're going to go through it together. So when God says, do you trust me? Well, then you have a decision to make. Will I allow him to do what he wants to do and not fear the outcome? Because to fear the outcome tells the Lord, I don't really quite trust you in this matter. God's seven unchanging truths. If you would, please write these down. I didn't put them on the on the outline because um, I didn't know if we were actually going to go this direction. But if you would, they're really short. It won't take you very long to jot them down, but you need to know these if you don't already know them. God sees everything I'm going through. Remember this. God sees everything that you're going through. Number two, God cares about everything that I'm going through. God sees and he cares. So number three says, God has the power to change what I'm going through. He absolutely has the power to change whatever I'm going through. God also has the power to answer prayers. I don't know about you, but he's answered so many prayers. And you know what? He's even not answered prayers that needed not to be answered. <laughs> All right, number five, God always acts out of his goodness for me. Whatever is going to change, no matter what happens, God is going to do it. For my goodness. Four is God has the power to answer prayers. Okay, number six. God's plan is always better than my plan. God's plan has always been better than any plan that I can come up with. And number seven. Last but certainly not least, God will never, ever stop loving you. 
that's never going to change in your life. God will always, forever love you. These are the things you need to focus on, the things that never change God's love for you. God's grace for me, God's goodness for me. Remember, whatever you go through, God will go through it with you. You will never have to do it alone. Every stage, every phrase, <clears throat> every phase, every crisis, no matter what, he is going to go through it with you if you will allow him to. God's going to go through it with me. He will never really, I'm sorry, you will never really be alone. God is always with you. God will never be closer with you than what he is right now. Now listen to this. God will never be closer with you than what he is right now. Nor will God never be any further away than where he is right now with you. So in other words, God's not going anywhere. He's right here. Let's turn to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 2. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, thou shalt not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. That is what we need to focus on. No matter what we go through, God's got us. He's got our back. He's with us. Maybe we need to focus on a little less internet and more in listening to God. That will give you confidence. That will also give you a foundation of stability. That will replace the panic with prayer. That will replace the worry with worship. It will replace anxiety with adoration. And in closing, the trouble you are in now is but for a moment. Suicide is the end of something that was just temporary. It is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. And I mentioned this in the sermon because the suicide rate, I don't know if you've been watching or you've been keeping up with it, is climbing. And it's not only affecting young people, it's affecting all ages. But they got to remember, you've got to trust in God. Because what we're going through on this earth is only temporary. We have a promise of eternal life. Always remember that. The seed of a faith planet in the soil of adversity under the watchful eye of a gardener will bring forth life and beauty in its own season. The trouble will not last. It's temporary and only for a moment compared to the eternal glory that God has for us and that is a weight. How you should see your trouble is how you will face your trouble. If you see it in fear, you will face it in fear. If you see it in doubt, you also will face it in doubt. If you see it in faith, you will face it in faith. And our last scripture, Romans 8, 28. And we know that those who love God, all things will work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Trust in God this day. As we were visiting and, and, and Sis was at the hospital a lot more than I was, I think I can speak for both of us. We saw people 
that have a lot worse trials and tribulation that we're going through right now. It, it, it's, it's always been true. You can always find someone in more need than you. And can you imagine as God looks down on this earth and he sees us? And he's got a Christian that's been faithful, that, that, that's been praying and that's been studying and that's been, been meditating on God's word. And he having to spend all this time on... Now take this with love. On fixing problems he has no business fixing. Not that our problems aren't important, but he's given us a weapon. He's told us that I will be with you. All right? You can walk through the fire and not be burned. It will not consume you. The flames will not consume you. So the trouble... And the things that you're going through is only temporary. This world that we live in is only temporary. But thank God we have a promise of eternal life with Him. We have a way of escape of this world. And all it takes is me believing in Him, believing in His Scripture, to, pay, to place my faith in Him and not in this world system. The world has absolutely nothing to offer me that's internal. Nothing. God is an awesome God. There's no doubt about that. Unfortunately, there are people out there that has no idea about the awesomeness of God. But it is our duty to go out there and tell them about how awesome God is. I know Miss Millie, and I'm sure Sis, because Miss Millie told me stories. There were people in the ICU waiting room that just knew how awesome God was. Because there's no quiet time with them too. Whatever they said, I'm sure it was heard. Because I'm the quiet one. And as I spoke, people listened. But it wasn't me, it was God. People are dying. And people are dying unsaved. It's a harsh reality, but it's a reality. We've got to first embrace that. We've got to understand, you know what? God does not want one lost soul. But as you look at this world, you can't help but see those lost souls. And our job is to reach as many before they take their last breath as possible. You know, as I was talking to Miss Millie and she was telling me stories of her childhood, and, you know, you, you know this is a very sobering, humble exercise that she's going through and I say exercise because it's only temporary so you try to pick up her spirit and you try to think of the scriptures and you try to think of, of stories in the Bible that will uplift to bring the joy back into her heart the joy back into her eyes the smile on her face the enthusiasm that you know what Everything is going to be okay. And as I find myself trying myself to accomplish that, I came up short. But it was only through God and the Holy Spirit that led the conversation to childhood things, childhood memories, that God allowed to happen in her life as well as in mine that at first were heartbreaking and just not very fun to go through. But God's turned that around. Because whenever you think that, you know what, I can't get through this heartbreak of this breakup, God has sent some 
your, your soulmate, the mate that he wants you to be with. Even though you, your child went through a terrible ordeal, he came out and now he's serving the Lord. It just puts an exclamation mark on um, God can bring you out of the deepest pit and put you on the highest mountain. He doesn't have to keep you in the valley. He doesn't have to keep you underfoot. He needs you out up front and inspiring other people of the good news that God has for all of us. That this is only temporary. Whatever you're going through right now, it's only temporary. It may seem like it's going to last forever or it has lasted forever. But tomorrow will bring another day another sunrise and another sunset. And God will work just as hard tomorrow as He did today for you. He will still be by your side. He will still comfort you. He will still push you. He will still test you and trial you. But guess what? It's only temporary. And instead of looking at the problem, look at what's not seen. And learn that. For the disciples did everything right. They followed his directions. But yet they were trapped in a storm. They thought that they could die in. But God had other plans. So don't think that you're in a storm that you're going to die in. Not literally. I think you understand what I'm saying. But you're in a storm that's only temporary. But if you'll trust God, if you will lean on His understanding in this matter, you're going to come out of that storm a lot more wiser and a lot more learned on how to handle the next storm. But did they learn their lesson in the first storm? <laughs> some did, some didn't. So here comes the second storm.